Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Uh, we're going to be continuing our series on the war in Israel, seeing it, seeing it from a biblical perspective, seeing it the way God sees it. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to be with us in these next few moments. Help us to open your book, understand history and events the way you understand them. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for that blood that was shed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. So this whole conflict is based over a region, all right? And this uh, region is called Palestine. It's a region. It's not a nation. It never has been a nation. It's never had a king or a president or a government. It's a region. Just like in the United States, we would say the Southwest or the uh, Atlantic seaboard or Central America. Those are not nations. They do not have a government. They do not have a king. They do not have it, 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 in, in, indigenous, <laughs> indigenous regency, if you will. It, they are regions. And that's what Palestine is. Palestine is a region. There has never been a Palestinian people, a Palestinian government. There's never been a king of Palestine. There's never been a capital of Palestine. There's never been a Palestinian army. The notion that Palestine needs to be liberated is a myth. <laughs> there, there is no Palestine. Palestine is a region. This region has been conquered and controlled and lived in and used by many different people throughout history. I mean, Alexander the Great had it for a while. The Ottoman Empire had it for a while. England had it for a while. And within this region, this is something that uh, uh, never gets brought up. In the region, uh, there already is an Arab state. It's called Jordan. Jordan is in Palestine. Okay. And so when we talk about these Palestinian uh, uh, peoples, uh, what we're talking about is Arabs from the nations around the Palestinian region that were living there. So there was never a nation there. There's, there's, there's never a government there. This, this is, this is, this is not a, an occupation, if you will. Nobody came in and conquered them and took their nation, took their land, took their, their cause there never was one. This land that we call Palestine, was given to somebody by God. And you can find that back in Genesis. In chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his, brother, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had, gathered in the souls that were they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land under the place of Sikkim, and into the plains of Moreh, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And God was good on that promise. And you know how it goes after they went down into Egypt and became a mighty nation in Egypt. And Moses led them out of Egypt. 
and then they wandered in the desert, and then the leadership was turned over to Joshua, and then Joshua in the chil- and the children of Israel, they went in and they possessed the land. And there in that land came to pass the nation of Israel, a mighty, mighty nation, the most wondrous, the most wondrous nation of Israel. The queen of Sheba came from the south and saw, saw Solomon and all that he had done and built in this great nation. And she was speechless. It was the most beautiful, majestic nation that ever existed. And that is the only nation <laughs> that has ever been in Palestine is the nation God gave Palestine to. And that is the nation and the people of Israel. And they have a long history in that land with many wars and many kings. But that land, that land is Israel. <laughs> and that's, that's the only nation, the only king, the only people that were in that land. Hey, when, when Joshua and the children of Israel went into there, there was a whole bunch of little city, little city states, you know, with uh, all the, all the, uh, uh, all the, I call them the, the, the tights, huh? the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Gitrites and the Shugnites and the Tutites. And there was all kinds of them. And God said, take them wicked people, smash them out, drive them out of here. Uh, they are unredeemable. They're like a cancerous limb. Cut them off, destroy them. Go in and inherit the land that I gave you. And that's what they did. There was, there was, it wasn't the nation of Palestine. It was just a whole bunch of of different city states and scattered kings in that land. And they came in, they took possession of the land that God gave them, and it has been Israel ever since. Now, there's been some rough times for Israel. <laughs> they got scattered because of their rejection of the Messiah. They got scattered for almost 2,000 years. But just as God promised, He in his word that he would do, he brought them back into their land and brought that nation back to life. But during the time they were gone, it was controlled by the Greeks. It was controlled by the Ottoman Empire. It was controlled by the, it was controlled by a whole bunch of people. And there was a bunch of Arabs from Jordan that came in and Arabs from other surrounding Arab nations that came in, set up tents, uh, 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 camped out there for a while here and there. But basically, uh, they are just like what we see. They were squatters. <laughs> that, that, that was Israel, and they were squatting in Israel. And, you know, that Israel gets a real bad name. But, you know, when Israel came back into the land, that land bloomed. It was just a desert. When, when, when the Jews came back to that land, that land bloomed. Fields, agriculture, cities. Uh, I mean, it, it became... It became a successful, beautiful, profitable place. And all those Arabs that were living in there, they all benefited from that. And, and, and they came there, they came, they came to work, and more came in to work. And uh, so, I mean, we have to understand that there's no such thing as Palestinian liberation because there never was a such thing as a nation of Palestine. Amen. That's, that's Israel belongs to the Jew. But you're not going to get that from the Islamists, from the, from the Arab Mohammedans, from, from, from the followers of Islam. That is not the story that they're going to tell you. And why is that? Because they lie like dogs. And they do so because that's their religion and their Quran tells them to do it. Look with me real quick in the book of Psalms, in chapter 28. Verse 3. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors but mischief is in their hearts. Well, that's a prophetic word about the enemies of God in the land. 
That is Islam. That is, that is the Mohammedans. That is the Muslim government. They speak peace. Oh, we're a religion of peace. Peace, peace. We'll make a deal. Peace, peace. That's not what's in their heart. I'll tell you what's in their heart. What's in their heart is what's in their book. What's in their heart is what is in the Quran. And the Quran will tell you in a dozen places that the goal of this religion is genocide of the Jewish people. The goal of Islam is to murder every single human being on the earth who will not bow down to them and pay tribute money to them. And it's in here a dozen times. When they come, you either submit to them and convert to Islam or they chop off your head. And when you do convert to Islam, you are required to pay them tribute. You know, when I was a younger man, I used to rob banks. <laughs> hey, they called that <laughs> extortion and armed robbery, and I did 30 years for doing that. <laughs> I ran into that bank and said, hey, <laughs> y'all want peace? Give me the money. <laughs> Amen. That's that's that is the goal of Islam. It is to conquer the world by violence, make all men submit to them and pay them money. That is the goal of this religion and this book. But see, they're allowed to lie to you about it. They are encouraged to lie to you about their goals, about their methods, uh, about their strategy, they're encouraged to lie to you. Because according to Islam, whatever you tell the unbeliever, whatever you do to the unbeliever is okay. As long as it spreads the goal of Islam. There is a, there is a, a couple of words I'm going to throw at you right here. Hudna and Al-Takir. Hudna and Al-Takir. The doctrine of Hudna is a temporary armistice or a temporary peace while one regathers, regroups, and rearms before coming back to battle. That's hudna. So it's kind of like they practice hudna in that they attack, they attack you, they attack Israel, trying to decimate, murder them all, right? And when they start losing the war, then they go, oh, no, no, peace, peace, peace. Let's have this do a treaty. Okay, okay. It's like, it's like when you're in a fight and you're losing and punches are getting rained down on your, on, on your head and you go, okay, I give, I give, I give. I'm tapping out, right? But the whole idea with Hudna is just a temporary armistice. While we regroup, regather, rearm, and come at you again. That's the doctrine of Hudna. And uh, well, a couple, we can look at a couple of places right here real quick in, uh, in the Quran where they get this Hudna from. And uh, let's look at uh, Surah 328. Surah 328 says this. Let believers not make friends with infidels in preference to the faithful. He that does this has nothing to hope for from God, except, here's your, here's your except, in self-defense. God admonishes you to fear him, for to God you shall all return. So, don't make friends with infidels in preference to other Muslims, unless it's in self-defense. Say, whether, this goes on to say, Say, whether you hide what is in your heart or reveal it, it is known to God. He knows all that the heavens and the earth contain. God has power over all things. So, he <laughs> what, what, what said, what did we read? <laughs> He's saying, peace, peace. <laughs> but that ain't what it's in his heart. So, he said, whether you hide what is in your heart or reveal it. Okay, this is, this is, this is the doctrine of Hudna. 
You can make a quick temporary peace because you're getting your butt kicked until you can go get more weapons and soldiers and come back and attack again. That's Hudna. Uh, another place we, they get that is uh, um, uh, Surah 16, 106. Surah 16 and 106. <laughs> Those who are forced to recant while their hearts remain loyal to the faith shall be absolved. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> if you got to lie about what your religion's really doing, <laughs> uh, as long as you, long as you're still true to it in your heart. <laughs> oh, we want peace. We want peace. No, you don't. You want to slaughter everybody and bring them in subjection to you and make them pay you. <laughs> All right. Those who are forced to recant while their hearts remain loyal to the faith shall be absolved. But those who deny God after professing Islam and open their bosoms to unbelief shall incur the wrath of God. Wrath of God. Amen. <laughs> so, hey, you can say in Islam, say whatever you need to say. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but as long as, as long as you know that it, it, it's all just a lie to the unbelievers so you can get power over them and destroy them, it's okay. God understands. Uh, that's that's the doctrine of Hudna. Now, when you get to uh, um, the other word is Altakia, Altakia, and uh, Al Altakia, uh, we get that from uh, from the Holy Hadith, and uh, that's the uh, other Islamic uh, holy book, which really accounts uh, uh, many of, of of the wars and other sayings and uh, uh, writings of uh, um, uh, of Muhammad. And uh, uh, and the and, and his followers and, and and founders of Islam and uh, uh, in the Holy Hadith and the reference I got I'm not sure how that all works out but it's like five comma fifty nine uh, period three six nine or whatever it's a uh, it's talking about that in the er in the early days uh, uh, in Mecca of Muhammad setting up his uh, his his religious empire. Uh, that uh, um, for the first 13 years, he had to practice this Altakia. In, in other words, that he was surrounded by the uh, polytheistic peoples, the pagan peoples of the land. And so what he had to do for the first 13 years is have a fake peace with them. In other words, he, 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 he had to pretend like he was good, like he was fine. Uh, and, and you can go into that in, in the writings and um, you... Uh, uh, you can uh, uh, find where he was in, even in his early writings, where he was okay with the uh, three uh, uh, female goddesses, the uh, the daughters of Allah, the moon god, and that he was in his early days. He went along with all that stuff, right? Uh, because uh, uh, the the point was when you get in the hadith, you know, until he had at least forty soldiers. So it, he took him 13 years, and once he had 40 soldiers and he had a little army, see, then he was able to come out and tell his true beliefs and take a stand against it, and then they were able to go and slaughter them and chop their heads off and, and, and begin Islam, all right? Listen, Islam is of the devil. He got supposedly got that from an angel in a cave, amen? He met some angel in a cave who told him all this stuff. And my Bible says, marvel not that Satan himself <laughs> is transformed into an angel of light. There is absolutely no doubt about who Muhammad got this from <laughs> in that cave. Amen. No, this, this, this thing is, this thing is wicked. <laughs> and, uh, and it's, and it's, it's the enemies of God. Israel is God's chosen nation. The Jews are God's chosen people. The entire Old Testament is about God and his people and their coming kingdom and their rule over the earth and their king, who we now know is the Lord Jesus Christ, and him sitting on the throne of David in Jerusalem and through the nation of Israel, ruling and reigning the earth for a thousand years. That's coming. That wasn't allegorical or symbolical. That was not fulfilled by the church. God meant what he said, when he said it, where he said it, and he meant it literally. 
Shame on anybody with an evil heart of unbelief that doesn't just believe what God says. Amen. And so, as we see the end times scenario uh, begin to sh take shape, and we talked about this in, in a previous video, is that, uh, you know, in this final empire uh, that came out of the Roman Empire of the, the Neb Nebuchadnezzar's dream, the image, the statue in the book of Daniel, and he interprets it for him, and he gets down to the legs of iron, which is the Roman Empire, and then you get down to the final kingdom, which is a revived Roman Empire with the ten toes, which correspond to the ten kings in Revelation, but you see it has in it the the strength of iron, that's the that's the old European nations that, uh, uh, that were the uh, Catholic Holy Roman Empire, it, we, you have that, but then you see that it is mixed with miry clay, and they do not cleave to themselves, and, and we saw that, that that miry clay that does not cleave to the seed of men there is the seed of Ishmael, who is a hand is against every man and, and against himself and, and will not cleave with anybody, and that, you know, would not be absolutely apparent until it actually happened. And so in our lifetime, we've actually seen that happen. We have seen Arab Muslims flooding into the European nations and completely rearranging and changing the demographic of the European nations. The European nations are now largely populated by Arabs. So this is the miry clay that came in and mixed with the iron of the old Holy Roman Empire. And uh, this, is, this is where the Antichrist is going to rise up out of, is this revived Roman Empire, which is the old Roman Empire and Islam all mixed up in there with it. And I'm going I'm to close. I'm going I'm to I'm hit you with a real good verse, man. I, I hadn't seen this before. Uh, uh, I'm sure it's been taught before, but, but this one... This one, I, I, I just peeped, and let me share it with you. It is super cool. Look in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 2, all right? And when we're talking about the Antichrist, right? Um, let's go back to, uh, like, verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. See, there's a lot of stuff that is written we don't really understand until it comes to pass. In the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it! <laughs> I like that. Wait for it! Huh? Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not unright, upright in him. Now we're, now we're going to start talking about the Antichrist. But the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also, because he transgresseth, transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. That's the Antichrist. Now, look who the Antichrist teams up with. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long, and to him that ladeth himself with what? Thick clay. <laughs> Iron mixed with the miry clay, the Antichrist will be laden with the clay of Islam. It's all coming to pass. It was all written beforehand. It's all in the book. Just believe your King James Bible. I know when I first got saved, the, and, and I say this over and over, and anybody that watches me knows this. The, the, the resounding words that God put in my heart in the moment of my salvation was Jesus is real and the Bible is true. Man, if you don't know anything else, 
anything else in all of time and all of eternity and all of your life. That's the most important thing. Jesus Christ is real and the Bible is true. Get to know him through the book that he has given, the King James 1611 Bible, absolutely 100% pure, the only 100% pure, preserved, and perfect thing on the face of this planet. This is your weapon. This is your guide. This is what you've got in these last and evil days when everybody else is in darkness and doesn't know what's going on. You've got the, you've got the light. Amen. You've got the light. It's all, it's all been written before it even happened. And we can go in confidence in these last and evil days as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Lord and Savior to take us out of here. Oh, we don't know the day, but we can know the time and we can know the season and we will not be in darkness as others. Amen. Praise God. We'll, uh, we'll do some more on this subject as we do our, our, our series on what is going on in Israel right now. You know I love you. Tune in next time. God bless you.